It's been a little over a year since we introduced 3D scanning here on the Making Stuff channel. And since then, there have been a few projects that utilize the 3D scanning process to complete the project. And the number one question I get asked all the time about 3D scanning is how did I go from the 3D scan to the finished part? This process usually involves using some type of 3D modeling or CAD software to manipulate the 3D scan to create a printable 3D model, such as this drink holder that I made for the mini jet boat. I scanned the dash of the boat and then used the software called Blender to create a drink holder to fit the profile of the dash. And while the results can often be pretty amazing, this can be a difficult and time consuming process the amount of work just depends on the type and detail of the project that's being created. And that also goes for these Gridfinity trays. I've been using Gridfinity out here in the shop to help organize it and organize my toolboxes. And I've been printing a lot of these Gridfinity trays. And there are generators out there that will make the generic tray for Gridfinity. However, you still have to use 3D scanning, 3D modeling, or CAD to make the cutouts. However, that is no longer the case because I have found a new website that will make custom Gridfinity trays just in a matter of minutes. There's no 3D scanning or CAD 3D modeling required. All you have to do is upload a photo of the tool or tools that you want to tray for, answer a few questions, and then you just download a 3D printable file. The whole process just takes a few minutes and the cost is absolutely free. The website is called Tooltrace AI and the company is actually in the business of creating custom foam tool inserts for toolboxes and drawers. And I do wanna point out that this is not a sponsored video. I have recently discovered this website and I have tried it out and the results are quite amazing. And I just wanted to share it with the maker community and the making stuff audience here on YouTube. So enough talking about it, let's head over here to the workbench and get on the computer. And I'm gonna show you just how easy and quick it is to make custom Gridfinity trays. All right, so I want to make a Gridfinity tray for this set of AN wrenches that I have here. And the first step that I need to do is take a picture of them. I've got my wrench set all laid out here and I'm ready to take a picture of it. And you may notice that there is a full size sheet of paper here in the frame of the photo. The reason for that is I can throw away my tape measure. I do not have to go around and measure each wrench and upload those measurements into Tooltrace AI. And that's because the piece of paper is a known dimension. And from those known dimensions, it can calculate the size of each wrench, which will eliminate measuring and also speed up the process. And the wrench or whatever it is we're gonna take a picture of does not have to be on the sheet of paper. You can see some of these are on the paper, some of these are off. You just have to have the full size sheet of paper in the full frame of the photo. Okay, so I've got the photo of my wrench set loaded on Tooltrace AI. And the first thing I need to do is select the piece of paper inside of the picture. And I do that by going over here to the upper right hand corner and I make sure letter is selected because I'm using a letter size sheet of paper, not A4. They are different sizes. And then all I have to do is come over here on the picture and put the crosshairs on the piece of paper and click my mouse button. And now Tooltrace AI knows the exact measurements of these wrenches because I have selected my piece of paper. All right, so the next thing I need to do is select the individual wrenches inside of the photo. And that is done by just clicking the add tool button. And then it's just like selecting the paper. You just hold the mouse over each individual wrench and select it just like so. So I'm going to select the large wrench here and let Tooltrace AI do its thing. And then I will just go through here and select the other four wrenches, and then we will come back and edit the layout. And just like that, I've got all five wrenches selected. And if you look right here on the screen, you can see there is a layout here. And before I go through here and edit it, 
The one thing I want to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn off the symmetry. And what this does is it automatically defaults to having this symmetry turned on and that will allow me to put the wrench into the tool tray either right side up or upside down. It doesn't matter which direction the wrench is pointed and I don't want that. I want them all facing the same way. So I'm going to turn the symmetry off. And now that the symmetry is turned off for all five of the wrenches, I'm gonna go in here and edit the layout. And this is pretty straightforward. I can just move the wrenches around to where I want them. And I think what I'm gonna do is put the large wrench up at the top and turn it sideways. And then move all of these other wrenches. If I can cl click on them, start with the smallest to the left and then work my way up to the largest. And I'm just going to sit here and kind of move these around. And you can see as I move the wrenches around, it also changes the configuration of the gridfinity tray, the amount of squares going in the X and the Y axis. So I'm going to move these around and get them all set up the way I want. And then we will go through and add some finger notches. And adding those finger notches is super easy. All I do is go over here to the upper left-hand corner and I hit the draw button and I can just go in here and draw these finger notches into place where I want them on each wrench. And it's just this simple, just a point and click process. The only thing that's a little cumbersome is I have to hit draw each time. It would be nice if it just hit draw one time and it would draw finger notches every time I hit the mouse button, but it's not that difficult. As you can see, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So let me get these finger notches in here and then we will continue. And you can erase a finger notch, you can move them around. Uh, it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty straightforward and it's a pretty quick process. And it only took a few seconds to get all of the finger notches set up the way that I want them. The only thing left to do now is go down here on the bottom of the screen and set all of my settings. The first one would be the foam color, which if we're 3D printing like I'm gonna do, the color really doesn't matter. Uh, if I go to settings here, you can see I've got it set to gridfinity. The units are millimeters and then the pocket depth. This is the depth of the pocket in the tray and my wrenches are about 10 millimeters. So I am going to set it to 10 millimeters and the default is 20, but you do want to be sure and set that depth of your pockets. The next setting is the offset distance. Now this is the amount of tolerance, I guess you would say, between the part and the little gridfinity cutout. If you want a tight fit where the tool doesn't move around a lot, you would want to select small, which is what I'm going to do. But if you wanted the tool to be able to move around, maybe be easier to get it in and out of the little cutouts, you might want to select a larger setting like medium or large. And then the last thing to do is sit, select the download, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I want to preview my design. I'm going to do that by clicking view design and it's going to generate a little preview here so I can make sure I got exactly what I want. And if we look here, it does take the website uh, a second or two to generate the finger notches. There you go. You can see it generated them, but here is my tool tray and this is how it's going to 3D print. And I like how this looks. So I'm just gonna select the CAD button here and download my files. And since I'm 3D printing these, I'm going to select the STL file format. And that STL file has been downloaded onto my computer and I have gone ahead and imported this into my slicer. I do have a four color printer. So I went ahead and added the coloring in the slicing software, you can see here, I've added this yellow, the background and the sides of each cutout. That's because if there's a wrench missing, I wanted it to be easily noticeable, but you can also see the finger cutouts are here and everything is good to go. 
My slicer is telling me that this is going to take about seven to eight hours for it to 3D print. So for me, it's going to be several hours, but for you guys, it's only a few seconds and here are the end results. This is the tray that I 3D printed and I said it took, it was gonna take nine hours. It was actually, I think seven and a half for it to complete this, but we have the multicolor with the yellow background and here are the finger notches. And here on the back are the Gridfinity grids. So this tray is good to go. However, it's totally useless if the wrenches don't fit. Let's see how well Tooltrace AI did on calculating the sizes. And so far, so good. All right. Looks like they did a pretty good job. All of the wrenches fit nice and neat and now my wrench drawer will be much more organized so tool trace ai did a really good job on this tray the wrenches all fit in here perfectly and having that four color printer i was able to print a yellow background here on the pockets and that way if there's a wrench missing it's easy to see it now if you don't have a color printer, it's still possible to get this result with the yellow bottom. And that is because when Tooltrace AI generates that STL file, it also generates these little inserts that you can 3D print separately. And all you have to do is just drop them into your 3D printed black tray or whatever color you wanna print it and then drop your other color in there and you get the same result when the tools not in the pocket you get a bright color to let you know so this has been the quickest and easiest way to generate custom gridfinity tool trays that i have found if you like the video please smash that like button and let me know down in the comments and if you are interested in these types of videos with these types of projects please let me know down in the comments because unless somebody tells me, I have no idea what you guys are interested in. I hope you liked the video and if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos and thanks for watching.